to tell you Fenton's Kayla Powell and Gina Otter. Gina Otter. <laughs> Kayla was great at BBS, BBS last year. Yeah. I don't know Gina, but he, she's cool too. Hope you enjoy it. Yeah. Bye. Good morning, Caleb. Good morning. Welcome. You know, I really thought it was at 9.45. I don't know why. I think it was a dream, but here I am now. For the first time, I'm earlier or something. I like the hat. Thank you, thank you. It's my new favorite hat, you know. Bought it for the mystery trip. It's just a bucket hat. Uh, the the mystery trip was, um, was that the like lone thing that y'all were able to actually do this summer? I'm yeah. pretty sure, yeah. Basically. There were some other little things that we got to do. And like the, the so camp week. Did Petty, Petty John. Yeah, the camp week thing. We did that with Memorial Road, but so it was at OC and it was like camp activities but in a night. Every night of the week. But I think honestly they did a really good job with it. It just isn't it's, it was the, for sure the corona version of camp, but it was good. Especially with the amount of time that they had to figure yeah. everything out. So the camp week was at night, and on Tuesday and Thursday of that week, we did some things in the mornings, or like, yeah, mornings with the kids, so. What, what was the turnout like? Did y'all have about the number that y'all would have had at camp, or was it scaled down? It was a little bit less, I think, but I think our group had a pretty good, like, our group's group had a pretty good showing up, but, like, don't you say that? Well, for the people who have been showing up since Corona started, yes. <laughs> that. But, <laughs> <That's> you know, <laughs> we lost some people as soon as Corona started, so. But I think now, after this whole summer and us slowly building the kids back up, I think we're going to have a more steady base of kids that show up to like every week. The law of unintended consequences kicks in and you get a bunch of opportunities that wouldn't have otherwise presented themselves. What was like the, the seeing the bright side of having a very scaled down numbers, where'd y'all find the, the upswing, if that makes sense? For me, at least, it was kind of, we might not have had as many kids, but when we would go do stuff, those kids were there every time. So like those few kids that showed up to everything, I felt like we were, at least me versus last year, I was able to get closer to them than I would have if, you know, it was a large group. I'm having to jump from each area. But at the same time, there's we couldn't do as much stuff. So it was kind of like a weird... It's like, I think I'm getting closer than normal, but I also see you not as much, so, yeah. Most of our, like, it's not an event. It was just things we would go do. I don't know how event-like they were, but we would go grab lunch and all that kind of stuff, just, like, quick daily things. And I think even though, like, maybe two or three would show up to lunch, I know Clee and Kayla were both busy, and I just took some – I just said, like, if you want to come, come. But there were, like, three there. But I got to know them really well because it was just three of them there. And then that was at the beginning of the summer, so that helped carry those friendships through the – or relationships, I guess. I don't know. They're friends with me now, I feel like, <laughs> um, through the, like, the end of the summer. And I, I think that was – it was kind of one of those things I was kind of nervous about going along because I hadn't really spent a ton of time with them. But whenever I got there, like, that – at the beginning of the summer, that would that set me up for just more relationships through the summer. My first year of internship, and I mean, Gina, you grew up at Memorial Road, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. My, my first year interning was with Memorial Road's group, and I loved it. It was a really fun year. It was the only type of ministry I knew. How have you experienced that coming from a totally different type of youth group background yeah yeah so I so going into the internship I was like I need to wipe any expectations of like what my youth group experience was because that's not how which with any internship 
with a youth group. That's how it would be is it's not the same. No, none of them operate the same way. And so I kind of, I didn't wipe them completely and I had seen New Hope in some aspects and, but I kind of was like, well, I just need to be like aware that there are not 200 kids and I can get to know people on a deeper level and not be like, oh, I'm missing out on someone else because I can also talk to that person too. And I think once the coronavirus stuff started, I was like, okay, like now I really don't have any expectations because I was like, I can't, like, I don't know what is going to be like and what it's going to be like. I don't know what I was going into, but I I was telling my dad, I was like, I'm really thankful for this internship just because I don't think I understood that an intern could get to know more than one set of people on a deeper level. Because growing up, I mean, in the youth group, my interns, like, the ones that I was close to, they weren't really close to anyone else because I was close to, like, it was my, my, my friend group. And I was just like, man, I don't, I don't love that aspect of it. So I kind of like the, like, deeper relationships. But it, it's just different. I was telling someone, they were trying to compare them. I was like, you can't really compare them just because it's a different ball game. I was like, it's not two of the same. It's, it's different. Things operate differently. I wonder, did the coronavirus almost help in that regard some with being able to just have the expectations be kind of whatever this summer is, this summer is, and, and I'm just going to roll with it? Yeah, so, I, I mean, I'm assuming yes, just because of how everything was happening. I, you know, in high school, I would set up expectations for myself a lot, and then nothing would be met to where I thought it would be and it was just like disappointing and I don't think I loved high school for that reason just because I wanted it to be something more than it was and that's just how I was and so going into college I was like I don't I can't expect too much or else I'm not going to be I'm not going to have fun I'm not going to experience what I want to experience so I still had expectations I just knew that they wouldn't be fully met and I could I could have some change in my expectations and it'd be okay. And so then coronavirus happened and I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> like, I just can't, you can't predict anything right now in the world. So I, uh, I think it did help just because it just opened up a little bit of space for that, but. I think it was beneficial mainly because like last summer, it's like I knew all the kids and I was close to all of them, but I can never really get to that point where they felt comfortable, you know, maybe talking about some of their problems or stuff they're going through. It was a few of them would get to that point, but because I was trying to spread my myself out throughout the whole youth group, it was hard to get any of them to really do that. And then this summer, it's like, okay, well, this week there's these three people here, right? This week there's these eight people here. So on those days when there's those three people, I can just sit with them, you know, hang out, talk, all that stuff. And then there's those eight people. I can still go back to those three people, but I just spent the entire last week doing stuff with them. So now I'm able to focus more on these, you know, maybe four or five more people that have come and try to get them to that same place. <laughs> you never knew who was going to show up. It was like, is it going to be these people or those people? And then sometimes everyone would show up and it'd be like, oh, we have 25 people, 30 people here. I have marveled for years at Cleet um, and his ability to balance what he does. And, and it's insane. He's, he's just, and to that same nature, having worked alongside Brian Plum for a year at, at Oak Crest, I've not found two people cut from the youth ministry cloth more than them. You can't have better people to work alongside and sort of learn from and just observe to, to be able to step back and realize, yeah, youth ministry, you're on call 24 seven. Like you're it's on a whim. Last night I was, we had church and then I was like, okay, I'll go, <laughs> I'll go um, start packing and moving. Cause that's what I'm doing right now. And we church ended and Marley came up to me and she was like, we're going to get Froyo. Come on. I was like, Oh, okay. Yeah. I was, I was like, I'll go. I was like, I don't need to pack right now. Really. I was like, 
it was just what I was planning on doing but I was like it doesn't even matter because it was her last Wednesday and I was like of course I'll go get froyo with you but it's just on a whim flexible yeah that's that's good interning right there too <laughs> What, what what have been the highs and lows, I guess, within that regard, even with the expectations kind of being, as we've established, non-existent to the best possible degree? The low probably would be like Petty John getting canceled. and But at the same time, we still got to do the makeshift, you know, Petty John, and it was still, it was still good. It was fun. I mean, it wasn't Petty John, but it was still good. And then I would probably say, like, the high for me was mystery trip. Like, seeing where we were at, you know, the amount of kids, like, how they were interacting from the beginning summer all the way to the mystery trip at the end when we had, like, 25 kids go. That was very encouraging, and it was fun hanging out with them and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah, I think mine are probably the same, but for maybe a little bit different reasons. I think that like I grew up going to Petty John and so that's just like a regular part of summer for me and I was excited to experience that as an intern with a different church instead of being with Memorial Road and I didn't get that really that which I was kind of looking forward to but it was still good and it's still like it brought up conversations that needed to be ha- like be happening and it was a, like a good way to distract from what all was happening in the world. <laughs> but, um, and then Mr. Trip, I think like that was what we were building up to all summer, just because that's the one thing that didn't get canceled. So it was just, I think that was a high just because we could still do what we were planning on doing kind of in a different way, but still doing it. Mystery Trip finally comes up and, and I'm, guessing after everything that had happened you guys are probably fingers crossed and weeks going in please don't get canceled please don't get canceled when did y'all leave what did that look like walk kind of walk me through your your grand finale of the summer We left on Wednesday, last Wednesday, the 29th, I think. And then we got back on Sunday, and whenever we said, how did leaving look like, we, we checked in pictures. We made sure everyone was healthy going on the trip, but. Um, they should have extra masks for everyone. Yeah, I think Caleb kind of knows more about like, I've never been on a normal mystery trip, so I don't know the difference, like all the differences that happen, but. So like, instead of, you know, Everyone gets on the charter bus, you know, there's like 40 something people. Uh, It was just two trucks, a car, a van, and a Suburban. (laughs) It was a lot shorter, like the drive itself. It didn't feel like it because uh, we were in cars and we, you know, you're not able to get up and walk around and move around in the charter bus, but just the getting to the place was completely different than it ever has been. So, and that was just the beginning of the trip. Five days? Five days, yeah. And instead of like, you know, the six to eight day trip, but we still got to go. We like, you know, we had worship every night. We were able to hang out with the kids. We went and saw, uh, Noah in Sight and Sound Theater, and that was good. That was crazy. There was like animals coming down, like the what is that called? A walkway? Aisle. An aisle. Thank you. Yeah, there's like camels and stuff coming down the aisle. Caleb <laughs> doesn't know some words, and I have to finish the sentence. Yeah, it's just it's okay. Was that? It was just way more chill, relaxed, kind of. I know like some girls would just go, like they would wake up, eat breakfast and go take a nap (laughs) and then get up and do stuff. I'm like, good for you, you do it, you go. But as long as you're healthy and feeling okay, I'm I'm good with it, but. Where'd y'all stay again? We went to Table Rock, like up in Branson or near Branson. It was a huge house and train cabooses. 
that were converted into like Black little cabin type yeah. things. Okay. And, you what know, all the guys were down in the train cabooses, all the girls in the house, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. This girl wasn't in the house, but okay. Oh, well, majority, majority. <laughs> we left at like 11, 11.30. You know how New Hope is. We never, our plan was to leave at 11. Left but, sometime you know, we, after we said we were going to. Be yeah. And so we got there at like six, okay. six o'clock. We stopped and ate, and that kind of pushed it a little bit. We stopped so many times. We, we stopped like stop. four times on a five-hour drive. We got there around 5.30 or 6, and then they got in the lake. They were not messing around anymore. They yeah. We kayaked, and we swam for a little bit, and then once it got dark, we were like, okay, we're done. Get the last couple hours of sunlight. Say it again, Caleb. They all passed out pretty quickly that night. Sure. Yeah, if you wear them out, they sleep. That's what we learned. And if you don't... They don't sleep. They don't, and so then you don't. (laughs) Oh, yeah. They had a ping pong table, a pool table. We brought Mario Kart. Okay, Uh, Mario Kart and Just Dance really were the... They were the hits of the trip. Uh, there's board games. <laughs> Marley. Marley is the best. Marley, Caleb could not beat her. I stopped playing Marley. He did at one point he beat her one like one race, but she he is one overall. Top dog. I think I she got beat by one other person, but that was it. And that was one time. That's really funny though. So Mario Kart, you said Just Dance was the other one? Yeah, so we bought it while we were there because <laughs> it's just an impulse. Like, we should get it. And something else. Also, yeah. So we were having like weather issues, like the whole- It was gonna rain the whole- It was supposed to rain the whole time. It didn't necessarily do, do that, but we I had s- to work for it. I see what you were doing with the Just Dance thing, the exerting the energy, the get them through. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> valuing that sleep it's good yeah well the just dance we brought it and we were like will it get used will it not like we had no idea like what they would want to do but it was an option and like we figured some of the girls would want to and we walked in and we were doing something else and we walked in and the first people playing it were the guys and i was like good (laughs) good this is going to be used perfectly well so I really think Just Dance was on the majority of the day. There was always someone doing it. Or someone playing Mario Kart, but... Mario Kart was more of the, I'm tired, let's just sit here and... That was like a after lunch, after you had been swimming game. (laughs) Where I just woke up and I don't feel like moving quite yet game. (laughs) (laughs) I love the variants. Different video games for different parts of the day. There's also fishing poles there. You can go fishing. Um, it didn't go well, but like that was an option. They were the, and I are the only ones that caught anything, and they were probably about that big. I think there's a picture of me holding up the fish, and it's like that big. And I, th- I saw the picture, and I thought it was a lure. I didn't think it was the fish. Clee and Caleb were the ones trying to catch the fish the most, but. <laughs> It just didn't work very well. No. Didn't. What kind of bait did y'all use initially? Worms? We used worms. We used artificial baits like jigs. We used catfish bait, catfish like cheese stuff. We chummed the water. I don't know what was going on, but we couldn't catch anything. The, the Noah, y'all said there was a Noah show? Yeah. yeah. What was that like? That it was awesome. I loved it. Uh, I didn't 
realize how much the story of Noah like parallels with what's happening today. And watching that and watching all that with the kids, like a couple of them came up to me and said, he's like, you know, that sounds a lot like what's going on right now. Like just how people are reacting to, you know, the church and stuff like that. And just all the chaos that's happening in 2020. So I think it was really good. Yeah. I didn't, I had never been to a sight and sound thing. And so I didn't know what to expect at all. The girls were like asking me all about it. And I was like, I think you guys probably know more than I do right now. Cause I have no idea, but it was really cool. I didn't, I didn't expect it. I didn't know it was like musical at all until we sat down and I looked at one of the girls who had been there and I was like, do they sing in this? <laughs> it's like, so it was like, songs and real animals it was really exciting but it also was just like a really good visual representation of a bible story that we hear and simplify and it's like they've got a bunch of animals and they were safe but they were safe but do you ever think about people who weren't like that was all visual in front of us like happening like you could hear everything and it was just really interesting in today's world there's a lot of people out there who are you know, they're like, well, I can just do this myself. I don't need God. I don't need his support. I don't need anything like that. It's like, why do I need that? When I just focus on me, I do what I want. It's like everyone has their own truth, which is not true. Your truth is your is your truth. My truth is my truth. He was talking about Max was bringing that up a lot. And he's saying, that just makes you realize how wrong that is. We had a conversation on the way when it was on the way to dinner. I was in a car with Caleb's basically family, um, his sisters and his mom, and then uh, Joe and Marley and Lillian. And we were talking about like just you don't like something that I said earlier. You don't think about how much it hurt them to be the only one saved. How much like how they felt. Yeah, they were. They were saved and that's a good thing but they also lost parents and like i know like it was like the noah's son's wives like their families were gone and um their, their friends were gone and like the people they saw from a day-to-day -day basis were gone noah's brother gone like and you don't think about that whenever you're hearing the story of noah you're not thinking oh, they were upset, they were hurting. You think, oh, they were saved, they were happy. And I just hadn't ever thought about that. And I think that a lot of people were like, wow. There are some things that we just skip over in the story to make it a happy little Bible story. And there's a lot of hurt in it too. And I think one of the girls was talking to me and was like, I didn't realize how long it took. That was commitment. That was commitment to build that art. And I was like, yeah. And that's how much he trusted. Like that is how much he believed that it was going to work out in his benefit. So I had that conversation, but I I am appreciative, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week. We'll catch y'all. All right. Soon. Probably not in person because <laughs> Corona. But Lord knows how long, but. Good to see y'all at least over a little bit on the video chat, but uh, we'll catch y'all later. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Thanks, Kayla and Gina. Hope everybody enjoyed it. See you next time on episode 50 of First Corner. What to say? <laughs> 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 <laughs>